Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. We are going to be continuing in the book of Exodus tonight. Uh, my name is Tony Brown. I'm the pastor here at Grace Prairie Missionary Baptist Church, and we're going through the book of Exodus in an attempt to glean as much. We all know the overarching story of Exodus, but there are so many details in this book that if you don't do a really in-depth study, you have a tendency to miss a lot of those details. <clears throat> and one of the things I'm trying to focus on as we go through these chapters are the details that reveal character, that reveal motive and intent, and, and a lot of the subtleties that you don't get when you're just thinking about the overarching story. So that's kind of the focus for tonight. In tonight's section, we're going to be in chapter 2, um, verses, I believe, 16 through um, 16 through 22. Yes, 16 through 22. It's on two pages in my Bible, so I had to turn back. Um, and what we're going to look at doesn't have a lot of theological significance, but it does have historic significance, and we can learn a little bit about where Moses was, not just physically in the world, but also spiritually and emotionally and what all was happening. So where we left off, Moses had um, kind of taken matters into his own hands. He was a son of the house of Pharaoh. So it's not surprising that, you know, he felt entitled to, to judge. And, and he was also a Hebrew. So he's living in these two worlds and he sees this injustice that's going on and he becomes aggravated. And uh, we, we see that he murdered an Egyptian, murdered him in cold blood, essentially. And then, um, you know, tries to set himself up as the prince of the Hebrews uh, in his actions by, by chastising two Hebrew men that were fighting. And uh, they called him out. And pretty soon Pharaoh and everyone else found out. Everyone knew that he murdered somebody and tried to hide their body. And uh, so he had to flee. And so here we're going to pick up the last part of verse 15. It says this, uh, But Moses fled from Pharaoh and stayed in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. So here we go. We're not told if Moses had time to pack. We're not told if he ran out of the city in, in a high-speed chase. We don't know the exact circumstances, but what we do know is Moses had to leave his home, the only home he had ever known in Egypt. So he fled Egypt, fled Pharaoh, fled the authorities and the government and the culture and the language that he had grown up with, but also fled his own people, the Hebrews, who had been living in Egypt ever since the time of, of Joseph. And so he finds himself on his own. Now, where did he go to? Midian. Where is Midian? Well, if you look at a map, you can pull it up on Google, pretty easy to find. Um, he was living in, in Egypt, in Goshen, and he fled. He would have had to have crossed the entire, I'm going backwards, but it's the right way for me, the entire Sinai Peninsula and then traveled down and crossed, um, crossed over um, a, a large body of water. Uh, all of a sudden, I can't think of what it's called. I think the Gulf of Arabia or something like that. All of a sudden, it just left my mind. And he's actually on the Arab on the Arab side. He's he's crossed the Sinai Peninsula. If you look at the map, like directly above where he was in Midian, if you follow the coastline up and keep just going once the coastline ends, you're going to be in uh, Israel, or you know, it would have been Canaan back then. But he was down at the very bottom of of that area. Um, at the coast of the Red Sea, and he was living in or traveled to an area called Midian. So very honestly, somewhat familiar culture to his Hebrew roots, but he'd been in Egypt. The people had been in Egypt, so they were um, very familiar with Egypt culture, Egyptian culture. This would have been essentially for Moses out in the sticks. He fled, he ran away, he went out to the country to try to hide and disappear. And it says at the end of 15 that he sat down by a well. More than likely tired, more than likely just looking for a place to rest for a minute. There were not rest stops, there weren't a lot of cities, there weren't a lot of places that you could stop. Hotels or other types of things were not the norm uh, back then. So people did not have places to sit, places to hang out. There weren't malls, there weren't restaurants. So the wells in most communities became a community place, a place where strangers were welcome, 
where no one would judge. It was kind of a, a, an open forum kind of area. So he sits down by this well. And in verse 16, it says this. Now the priest of Midian, he's called a priest, um, had seven daughters. And they came and drew water and filled the troughs to their water, uh, troughs to water their father's flocks. The shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and saved them and watered their flock. So we have this situation and a little bit of description. We know that um, the, the daughters, there are seven of them, and they belong to a man who is the priest of the area. Um, now, a priest, um, they are the individual who holds worship services. They offer sacrifices. Um, they are the ones who put themselves before God. And um, we don't know anything about how this man became a priest. We assume, um, you know, he had some calling, but we're not really informed about that yet. Don't know much about him at all, other than the fact he's got these seven daughters. They arrive, <coughs> and essentially these daughters are being bullied. They arrive to water their flocks. They go through the work of pouring all the water out and filling up the troughs so the animals can drink. So they've brought the animals by the well. They're filling up the troughs, and then some other shepherds show up. They drive them away. They cause all these problems. Basically, they were waiting for the girls to fill up the troughs so that they could bring their animals in and not have to do the work. Well, Moses, again, we see a very similar kind of behavior. Moses stands up against this injustice, gets on to the shepherds, sets things right, and helps, helps the girls water the animals. So we see, this is an important thing to note about Moses. <clears throat> yes, Moses did murder somebody, but he, he's a man that is driven by a sense and an idea of justice. That, that motivates Moses. Um, he grew up in a, in a household where justice, law, and you know, government were constantly being talked about. He had an internal sense of what was right and wrong. And he was brave, and he wasn't afraid to stand up and take action. Now, we're going to see this through the rest of Moses' life, and sometimes it's a positive and sometimes it's a negative. But we're learning now about Moses' character at this young age of his early 40s, essentially. Um, so Moses just did not put up with this nonsense. The girls return home, and, and we're going to pick back up in verse 15, 18, excuse me. When they came home to their father, uh, to their father, Ruel, he said, How is it that you have come home so soon today? Which implies to a degree that these shepherds have been harassing these girls for a long time. Um, they've been having trouble going to the well for a while. And 19 says, they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hands of the shepherds and even drew water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, then where is he? Why have you left this man? Call him that me he may eat bread. Okay, so the father, we learn his name, Ruel, he asked the girls, how are you back so soon? I know you've been having trouble. And the girls tell them the story. Look, we were there. The shepherds were there. The same thing was going to happen again. And an Egyptian man, they literally used the term delivered us from their um, bullying, essentially. Um, and then he watered the sheep for us. And the, the dad's response is one of gratitude and one of thanks. And they say, he says, well, you just left him there? You didn't invite him back to the house for food, um, you know, so that we could thank him for this? Um, this is something that... Uh, I'm not sure what was going through the girls' mind. I'm sure they were shocked. I'm sure they were dismayed. They were girls, the young women. They probably didn't quite know what to do or what was appropriate. Um, so they, they just returned home. Um, and in verse 21, we, we've, it just stops there with this part of the story. Um, it doesn't tell us how supper went. It doesn't tell us how they talked to each other, got to know each other, etc., etc. It just jumps ahead again. And in verse 21, it says, And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter Zipporah. And she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land. So the story 
has this heroic moment for Moses. Moses meets the family, shares a meal with them. We don't know how long. We don't know what happened. Obviously, he was convinced to stay, and then he just decided to stay on. Probably, um, Ruel, the, the priest of Midian, probably decided it was going to be a great idea to have this young man around. So he latched on to him, and then he, he married his daughter to him. So now he's part of the family. So this guy was advantageous, too. He needed some help. He only had daughters. Not that daughters aren't useful, but sons and men uh, are a lot more useful when it comes to defending and doing the heavy work, hard labor kind of stuff. So um, Moses is married to Zipporah, and they have a son. And Moses names him a name, not uncommon, that represented his situation. Um, I, am, I have been a sojourner, sojourner in a foreign land. <clears throat> this implies to us that Moses has not gotten over what all has happened to him. He's still, to a degree, um, his heart is back in Egypt. His heart is back there with his people. But he can't go back because he'll be killed. He'll be executed. So here we have Moses the alien. Moses was born a Hebrew, but he was hidden until they couldn't hide him any longer. Then they had to give him up to the Egyptians, but God worked it, orchestrated it so that it wasn't for death, but for life and prosperity. Then he grows up an Egyptian, a royal court Egyptian, knowing well-educated, knowing all the customs and all the practices and the language. And then we see Moses the, Moses the Hebrew turned into Moses the Egyptian, turned into Moses the, the murderer, turned into Moses the fugitive. And now he is Moses the Midian. And he calls himself a sojourner. He's traveling. He's, he's displaced. He's lost. He's biding time. But Moses' character doesn't change. Moses' character grows and develops and we're going to stop at this point because from here we we see some we see some things begin to change and um we're going to pick up next week with those finish up chapter two and probably get into um well we probably won't get into chapter three because it is really intense but <clears throat> We will be looking at, we've seen the development of Moses, and next week's section, we're going to look at God's character. And the Bible reveals to us God's character. And then in chapter 3, what we get into is God introducing himself to Moses. And we're going to discuss that in a lot of details. All right, so that's all we have for tonight. I hope you guys are staying warm and dry. Um, supposedly, we got some snow flurries last night. I didn't see any because it was cold and dark, and I wasn't going to go check. So it was on the news on Facebook. Uh, we did not look. Uh, people were posting some pictures of it, but we stayed warm. I hope you do, too. We're going to close with a word of prayer, and I look forward to seeing you guys there for uh, worship on Sunday, Sunday school at 10 a.m. on Sunday, and uh, just look forward to seeing you all then. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we do thank you for today, your grace, your mercy, your love. Lord, we just pray that you would give us wisdom as we study your word. Lord, as we learn about who Moses was and, and how his encounter with you changed everything, God. How you can use people, God, even in bad situations, to do amazing things. Lord, we're on a journey. We're sojourning also, Father, through a world that is not our home. And I pray, God, that you would help us, be with us, God, that we would find times of rest and comfort in harsh places. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, we'll see you all next time. God bless.